Hello and welcome. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran and you're watching the second installment of a special broadcast here on DD India. We're calling it Coronavirus, the Politics, Economics and Diplomacy. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has plunged the world into a crisis. Thousands of people have died worldwide, including in South Asia. Governments are scrambling to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Now, what's the economic impact of coronavirus on India and the world? Two industry experts join me to help find the answers so that you, the viewer, know what it takes to be on top of the news. Let me introduce them to you. Dilip Chinoy, Secretary General of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, also known as FIKI, and Anilki Agarwal, a past president of the Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry of India, popularly known as ASOCHIM. Right, gentlemen, uh, welcome to DD India. But first, let me bring you up to date on the news so far. Now, two days after initiating the video conference of South Asian leaders, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a telephone conversation on 17th March with the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. Remember, Saudi Arabia is the chair of the Group of 20 or G20. It will host this year's G20 summit in Riyadh. The two leaders discussed the global situation regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister Modi stressed the need for coordinated efforts to adequately address this global challenge, which has impacted not only the health and well-being of several hundred thousand people, but also threatens to adversely affect the economy in many parts of the world. On to some market news now. Indian stock markets did not perform to expectations today. Not entirely unexpected because investors worldwide are on edge as fears of an impending global recession is leading companies to plead for billions in government help to prevent them from going under. And Prime Minister Modi has asked people to share technology-driven solutions for coronavirus. In a tweet, he said that a lot of people have been sharing technology-driven solutions for COVID-19. He urged them to share it on citizen engagement platform called MyGovIndia, saying the efforts can help many. He said innovation should be harnessed for a healthier planet. All right, let's turn our attention to international news now. The World Bank has earmarked $14 billion to assist companies and countries in the efforts to respond to the rapid spread of COVID-19. It has added uh, $2 billion to the initial package. The bank said that the package will strengthen national systems for public health preparedness, including disease containment, diagnosis and treatment, and supporting the private sector. The World Bank is committed to a fast and flexible response based on the needs of developing countries. Meanwhile, the coronavirus pandemic has pharmaceutical companies working against the clock to develop a vaccine and treatment to combat the disease. Arcturus Therapeutics is one of the companies developing a potential vaccine for coronavirus that aims to use a single shot. Now, through a single shot, the company aims to build tiny spikes as visible on the coronavirus so that the body of the patient builds up an immune response and protects them from the real virus. Also, U.S. drug maker Pfizer has signed a deal with Germany's BioNTech SE to co-develop a potential vaccine for the coronavirus using BioNTech's mRNA-based drug development platform. The drug makers will start the collaboration immediately and have signed a letter of intent for the vaccine's distribution outside China. And self-isolation and tension are on the rise as the coronavirus continues its global offensive. The UK was the latest nation to lockdown. Morning traffic was sparse on 17th March, one day after Prime Minister Boris Johnson shut down social life in the UK and ordered the most vulnerable to isolate for 12 weeks. Meanwhile, UK Finance Minister Rishi Sunak says that he wants to give countries, businesses, all the tools he can to help them make it through the pandemic as severe social restrictions become advised. Now, my colleague Stuart Smith reports in London. Take a listen. Measures designed not just to try and increase confidence in the economy, but to genuinely support individual people who either fear for their jobs or individual businesses who fear for the future of their business. But Rishi Sunak went even further. He said that if the £330 billion is not enough on its own to both protect the National Health Service 
and to keep businesses afloat, he will spend even more. A phrase he kept using over again, he'll do whatever it takes to keep the UK economy going during this trying time. All right, let me go to my guests in the studio, Mr. Chinoy and Mr. Agarwal, for more on this developing story. Mr. Chinoy, if I can come to you first, your thoughts on the economic impact of coronavirus on Indian economy and the world at large. Do you have any numbers to share with our viewers? No, actually, if you look at the uh, impact, mm -hmm. right? So in the world, people are talking about growth going down to 2.5% this year from the projections that were made. Right. But in India, there are three types of impact. The mm -hmm. first type of impact, which you know we're discussing with the ministry, was the impact on supply chains, whether it is the APIs sure. for pharmaceuticals or the modules for EVs or component uh, or, uh, or modules even for the uh, renewable energy and solar panels or the auto industry or the chemical industry, et cetera. So how do you keep supply chains going? And the, the challenge there was that most uh, companies had uh, supplies to last till the end of March or the end of April. And if uh, supplies from China did not uh, come up, then there would be a challenge. And for the uh, energy installations, the solar energy installations, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, force major clauses need to be uh, implied. So that's the first one. The second right. one was because of the ban on travel, the lockdown, how it is impacting the airlines. So mm -hmm. we had very recently had a meeting with the minister, Mr. Puri, and the estimation was till day before yesterday is around expected 15, 20%. But if this ban continues for more than you know, two weeks or three weeks more, right. then you could be severely impacted. Mm -hmm. International travel has been impacted. Uh, the most impacted airline in that case is Air India. Hotels are down to 25 to 15 percent, uh, you know, uh, occupancy. Mm -hmm. In Delhi, the cinema halls are closed, so it accounts for seven point some percentage of one chain, three point five percent of another chain. And if you look at the old Hindi uh, movie market, it's around 13 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have bars, restaurants, all closing. So you know, different segments have different impacts uh, there. On the other hand, uh, you know, uh, sanitizers and, and masks and all have flown off the shelf. So you know, that's a huge impact there and the short supply and people have started hoarding, which is not the correct thing to do right. because I think there's enough to be done. So depending on the sector, depending mm -hmm. on the length, there'll be different type of impact. The stock markets, as you talked about, it's a huge uh, loss there. And uh, the small and medium companies are being impacted. The re real estate sector is talking about the temporary workers and the daily wage workers being impacted in, in a manner because you know the, uh, things are being put on hold, and uh, you know you're seeing a lot of different impacts in different sectors. Indeed, let me take that, uh, take that question to you, Mr. Agarwal, as well. Your your uh, thoughts on the short term and long term uh, consequences of what we are seeing unfold before our very own eyes as we speak? Well, first of all, you know, as we see that uh, the adverse impact of uh, COVID-19 right. is, uh, is very, uh, very, very harsh and very, very quick. Mm -hmm. So if you see from the first quarter itself, uh, there are 198,000 cases, 8,000 deaths, and uh, the economies the world over are suffering. They're suffering because uh, the countries have locked down their countries. There are no uh, inward, outward movement of uh, people. Mm -hmm. And when you do not move people, you do not move products, uh, there is going to be a chaos in the market. There is going to be a short supply. There is going to be orders not being fulfilled. The supply chain management getting into disarray. Right. And the production facilities, the world over, are taking a knock. Now, if you look at the worldwide figures now, the United Nations Trade and investments have said that there will be impact already of one trillion dollars on the world economy. One trillion? One trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And if you see the Chinese economy, mm -hmm. which is the epicenter of the whole problem, uh, it is expected that in the first quarter, they will have uh, a growth rate of only about 1.5% to 2%, mm -hmm. which is going to make a big, huge impact on the world economy. Mm -hmm. All countries are taking definitive steps to curb the spread of the virus and to stop the movement of the people as much as possible. Now, coming to India, yeah. I think we are very fortunate that till now, mm -hmm. we have only very few handful cases in India and that too in few cities only. And looking at this, the government of India, the central government and the state governments 
have really taken coronavirus problem into their stride and they have moved very fast mm -hmm. in taking up steps to curb the spread of the virus. Now, if you see the economic situation, I think a few are positives and a few are negatives. Right. In the positives, if you see, mm -hmm. because of the worldwide supply and also due to the fact that the, the Russians and the Saudis are trying to, to, to balance their <laughs> scores with each other, uh, the crude prices have gone down to $30. Indeed. So this would have a positive impact on the Indian economy. Mm -hmm. And also the fact is that the aviation industry, the travel industry, the transport industry is not having much of demand. So the crude prices will continue to hover around this and this would have a big positive impact on the Indian economy. Mm -hmm. Now if you see the supply chain management, most of the supply chain management was Chinese industry driven. Yeah. So we will have in India possibilities that the multinationals will look at India for fulfilling their long term supply chain mm -hmm. supplies from Indian industries as well because there are similar multinationals operating in India and they have those similar qualities what they have in China. So we will have that positive impact. Now in international financing, as you see, that the US has, the interest rates have come down to nearly zero, and so has the European rates. So I think the Indian borrowings will have a positive impact on this. Uh, now if you see in terms of Indian economy, Indian economy is not so much of outward looking, Mm -hmm. It has always been internally growing and I think we will not be adversely impacted okay. in terms of the growth numbers. Mm -hmm. But looking at the negative aspect, we are not insulated from the world economy and if what the people are saying word over that there is a recession which is coming in mm -hmm. and if it does, there will be an impact on the, on the Indian economy as well and uh, we believe that we may, we may be down by 1 to 2 percent overall in sure. the economic numbers. Indeed. Uh, fair point, Mr. Agarwal. Mr. Chinoy, if I can come to you. Prime Minister Modi has spoken about involving or roping in the private sector to, in the immediate term to tide over this crisis. So is there scope for uh, private public sector cooperation maybe in, in testing kits, in research, in pharmaceuticals, in vaccine development? Uh, what's the, what's the uh, scenario looking like from your vantage? So if you look at uh, the private sector mm -hmm. involvement in this, I think there are three very specific areas. Okay. The first is help and containment. Mm -hmm. So can you look at work from home? Can you, you know, FICI has developed a protocol mm -hmm. which you shared with our membership of how do you create manufacturing uh, uh, spaces as safe spaces to actually work in, right? So that's the first thing. How do you help in the containment of the right. uh, the second thing is how do you actually work in uh, in supporting the people who may be impacted there? And the first one was testing. Mm -hmm. Till three days ago, actually, the private sector was not in uh, not allowed to test for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It is only uh, three days ago that the uh, government has allowed the private sector to look at testing uh, for this. And the second part of that is how do you enable uh, the private sector also to get into the treatment uh, space right. uh, there. Mm -hmm. Now, as uh, Mr. Agarwal had said, the numbers are small. Mm -hmm. So at this point of time, with small numbers, perhaps the whole scenario can be contained. But if the numbers spread, then you know private sector capacity would be required uh, to actually uh, be put into place as uh, you know isolation places. There's already talk of hotels in in the Aero City being used as isolation uh, centers, mm -hmm. the hospitals to treat people, and the doctors to actually support the government uh, sector in that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the third uh, area is to you know, manufacture and provide for supplies. And you yourself, when you introduced the program, talked about vaccine development, right. and you know, uh, the whole issue of masks, mm -hmm. sanitizers, and, mm -hmm. and you know, all the things that are required to do that. And most of all, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, this is the medical part, but again, right. you know, schools are closed. Mm -hmm. So how do you develop e-content, colleges, e-content, what's the role for private sector there to ensure that this uh, goes on? And of course, looking at, you know, uh, not, uh, not creating a situation where people are out of jobs, you know, the contract workers, the daily uh, workers, they're kept in employment and how do you keep them going mm -hmm. so that you create a social uh, kind of uh, uh, positive social impact uh, going forward. 
indeed. Mr. Agarwal, the service industry is the worsted, tourism, hospitality industry. Uh, is Have we reached a tipping point yet in India? Because if I can run through the global uh, information available from the UK, for instance, they've spoken of a 330 billion pound package of government-backed loans for virus-hit businesses. In the US, they are speaking of a $1 trillion stimulus proposal, including putting $1,000 each in the pockets of every American citizen. Uh, Sri Lanka, for instance, has spoken of a moratorium on repayment of loans for six months for SMEs. So uh, what's the situation like in India today? Well, you know, all across there is an impact, and of course the service industry especially from tourism, travel, hospitality right. is very adversely impacted and affected. And I believe that it will take at least three, four quarters before this industry can come back again, mm -hmm. because the fear of unknown will continue to haunt the people and they will not take the risk of traveling. They will not go to the countries where, especially in Europe and uh, you know, uh, countries like South Korea, China, uh, which have been major countries where there has been uh, business travel as well as the tourism travel. Right. Uh, so this industry will definitely suffer in India as well as internationally. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the big impact that we'll have, I think apart from uh, the, the sectors that we've been talking about, the industrial sector, yeah. there is also a political impact. If you see that there is a definite cry in countries in China, mm -hmm. the Communist Party is being severely criticized uh, though it is not so much in public knowledge, mm -hmm. but it is so. Mm -hmm. uh, so is the case in Iran. <coughs> so is the case in France, in Turkey, in Spain. Mm -hmm. All political parties are having a backlash of what is happening due to the coronavirus and their people are crying. People are crying for, uh, for even the test kits. Mm -hmm. Now we talked mm -hmm. about a little while ago about the private-public partnership. Yeah. And that's where I think the uh, private sector has to come forward, particularly yeah. in India. Mm -hmm to give a helping hand to the government right. in providing the test kits. There is a shortage right. of test kits at this point of time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, leave in aside the vaccine. We are importing kits now from Germany. Yeah. Yes, leave aside the vaccine, which is far away. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, as Mr. Shunai said, that we, we need to provide for uh, the beds or True. the hospitals or uh, the clinics that mm -hmm. we have in the private sector, the government, and. Uh, give them the helping hand to mm -hmm. see that the coronavirus is not spread. Mm -hmm. uh, the second impact that we, as we see is also on the education, you know, when the schools and colleges and the educational institutions have been shut down, mm -hmm. though the virus is said to have impacted only the older people, uh, perhaps in my and the lips age group, <laughs> but the schools and colleges, the youngsters are being deprived of their education. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will also take back the the uh, sector a, a few sectors behind mm -hmm. a few quarters behind and we will have some adverse impact on that as well similarly the the religious the temples the mosques the uh, the churches and everything else has been gatherings have been mm -hmm. kind of people have been asked not to go there not to throng there mm -hmm. which is good and bad both okay. so good that <laughs> not many people are going there bad because there's religious sentiments true, are being hurt. Uh, the other thing that is also impacting is the worldwide sports. So if right. you see that uh, uh, the hockey events, the winter Olympics, the uh, football, everything else is being canceled. So this also calls for a, a specific industry which will have a negative impact. Sure. Now most importantly, another industry which will have the problem mm -hmm. is about the availability of food. Mm -hmm. Now you see whenever there is harvesting, mm -hmm. a particular labor from a particular place will move to the other. Uh, if you see in India, people will move from Bihar, Uttar Pradesh to Punjab mm -hmm. for harvesting of fruits and vegetables. Uh, this will be very difficult. And similar is the situation even in the US, yeah. even in Europe, people move from places during the harvesting season. Mm -hmm. So they, the growers are in a fix. What would they do when they are not able to pluck the fruits of their labor, the toil that they have done on the earth for a season? Mm -hmm. And uh, they will, this will also adversely impact the food processing industry. And there could be a, there could be a point that we see some food shortages. Sure. 
Mr. So, Chinoy, just a quick point uh, and a follow-up question to you. You spoke about education and e-learning. What is on the agenda in terms of an immediate, in the immediate term, for instance, to help students in India? Uh, how will e-learning work? And uh, are any specific companies like uh, Google, for instance, which might be interested in entering or collaborating with Indian counterparts? So, you know, just to give you ex uh, two examples, sure. you look at people in school, mm -hmm. right? You are now closed. So how do you continue classes? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of, you know, Fiki did a program with Khan Academy and Google Hangout of how can you use uh, this whole digital system to continue classes and to enable the students to be engaged, okay. right? So that's one, mm -hmm. use, of, use of technology. Second is you need the material, teaching material, right? right? So how does the ed tech companies who got this, Baiju's have talked about it, other people have talked about it, to make education e-learning modules in addition to what the CBSC and the Ministry of Human Resource and the school state school boards have, how do you make it available free for students? Right. right? So that is one specific uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And a similar thing in, 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 in the college sector, mm -hmm. you know, uh, books that are typically available only in libraries. We find that there are publishing houses who are offering this free of cost to students for the uh, period so they can refer to the books online, right? But that also means that, you know, you've got to have, a, have online connectivity. Right. right. So these are the two things that are actually being done here. And, you know, in, for example, in Delhi University, the teachers have to upload their material onto the net or, you know, communicate the uh, material to their students. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have a telephonic interaction with the students, et cetera. So, you know, till the time this is happening, and as like Mr. Agarwal said, if this extends into April or this thing, then the question comes of how do you do the examinations? Right. You know, how do you save the semester? What do you do? Uh, so that is the whole education piece that we are talking about. And then, you know, you have the CBSC uh, exams uh, coming up uh, in May. So that's the whole challenge that we're looking at it. And the best thing that can happen is, you know, it starts contracting by the end of this month and by April, we are kind of, uh, you know, free, f uh, free from it. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, you know, the, the average Indian would be wondering, and this might agitate many a mind in India today as we speak, how will it affect the job market, the job situation? How will it affect or impact the wages? How will it impact the uh, banking sector, for instance? and the credit worthiness of uh, individuals or institutions. So uh, have we had any uh, planning uh, absolutely on this front going forward? I mean, how is the situation looking up uh, from your uh, perspective? So surely there is a slowdown mm -hmm. and the slowdown will continue for a few more quarters. Okay. And it is likely that we will have job losses because uh, most of the SME sector which is impacted will not be able to take the hit. Mm -hmm. The large industries could for a while, they could sustain few quarters, uh, but surely the, the SME sector, the service sector, the tourism, the hospitality sector will not be able to take the hit and there will be some job losses. And now the question is of uh, providing the incentives, providing right. the stimulus. Mm -hmm. So as you see that uh, the President Trump has announced yesterday $1.2 trillion. $1.2 trillion is something what started with President Trump's first announcement of $2 billion, mm -hmm. so which is nowhere. Uh, and and he's talking about, as uh, Dilip said earlier, he's talking about giving $1,000 a month yeah, yeah. to the people. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we, we cannot be uh, doing such extravaganza in Indian economy, but I think the government of India has to plan out something to give some stimulus to do so something. Have there been any interactions between, say, the industry chambers and the government at any level whatsoever? I think at this point of time, we are all concerned that the spread be contained. Okay. And then the okay. next step would be to talk about the stimulus. Sure. I don't know if Dilip can add more. No, no I think, sure. uh, you know, I think, in, you know, just by, uh, we had uh, uh, full interaction, the airline industry, the airport authorities, the ground handling, mm -hmm. you know, the airlines, etc., had an interaction with the uh, civil aviation minister in okay. Hyderabad a few days ago. And the challenge is mm -hmm. that if there's a ban on meetings, mm -hmm. right? How do you actually uh, <laughs> do this, so right? how did you, yeah. Uh, so that was, you this was before the, one day before okay. the ban actually came in, mm -hmm. right? Because they were a really impacted sector. Mm -hmm. But also yesterday in a smaller group, uh, you know, there was a meeting in a ministry to talk about the availability of sanitizers, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, uh, you know, before that, uh, like, you know, the commerce ministry had, uh, 
uh, taken the lead in the finance <laughs> minister, taken lead of interacting with the industry mm -hmm. about supply chain challenges and right. you know export challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, as Mr. Agarwal mentioned, uh, you know, you take seafood, right? So 25% of shrimp export is to China. Right? So how do you actually address that? And most of it exported sure. to Southeast and other parts. So they are actually facing uh, a challenge uh, mm -hmm. here. So depending on the sector, uh, there are different ways for the government to address it. But I think, you know, government is doing things in parallel while, mm -hmm. you know, even uh, the civil aviation minister is a part of the uh, group of ministers addressing this. Right. You know, very few people know that more than 14 lakh uh, screenings have been done at the airports. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't even yep. imagine uh, that uh, here. So there's a lot of activity that is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, as and when the thing comes up now, uh, I'm sure that the government will be responsive right. uh, to uh, you know, doing things to support industry and especially mm -hmm. support the small and medium companies. Right. The RBI actually announced it. Unfortunately, the governance structure in that you know, has to, uh, you know, that the MPC has to meet mm -hmm. before they can talk about uh, reduction in interest rates. Mm -hmm. And then you know, the monitoring on loans, et cetera, is another sure. uh, cycle. So I think that will happen as we go along. Right, I'm afraid I'm running out of time. So one last question to both my guests, uh, starting with you, Mr. Agarwal. Your, from your perspective, your expectations from the government, from the Indian government in the near term? I think the government of India has done well in mm -hmm. terms of propagating the cause of uh, containing the okay. spread of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, set up uh, good facilities all across the country to not only uh, test, but also to provide comfort to the patients if they sure. they turn positive. Right. Uh, the other thing is that there would be definitely a slowdown. There would be definitely job losses. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at. We need to put our uh, heads together. We need to put our resources together to see that how can how best can we give comfort to those who would lose their jobs, who would lose their uh, economic activity, mm -hmm. and what would be uh, the possibility that they will. Uh, continue to survive a few more quarters right. in a in a manner that they should. Sure, Mr. Jinnah, you get the last word. Your yes, thoughts? No, thank you. So first, you know, the focus on containment, mm -hmm. uh, which is now spread even to the municipality level. I think that is very important. Mm -hmm. And second, you know, for us, it has come at the end of the financial year, mm -hmm. and we are just about. 12 days for the beginning of the new financial year. Mm -hmm. So the government could actually fast track the, you know, uh, payments to PM Kisan, could do the, right. uh, you know, put money in the hands of people. True. You know, the Manrega program, so that the people who impacted there, they could innovatively use the Absolutely. apprenticeship program and give sure. the money to small industries to actually retain employees, as mm -hmm. has been done in Australia and other parts of Europe. So a lot of coordinated action is possible, and I'm sure that the government will put its mind together and you know, industry and government will work in partnership to address this and ensure that the mm -hmm. uh, economic loss and the health loss to the country is the minimum. All right, Mr. Chinnaw, Mr. Agarwal, thank you so much for sparing time to uh, be on DD India and speak to us. Appreciate it, thank you for your time. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap on the special broadcast, but news continues here on DD India. You can catch all the latest updates on our social media, mobile and digital platforms. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.